In a previous video, we looked at how to execute any program in our system using the exact family of functions. That video you can check up top. With which we could just execute any program given its path, its uh, arguments, and of course we can specify if it could use the path variable, environment variable, and if uh, we wanted we could also give it some environment uh, variables ourselves. Okay, so that was amazing. There was a really big caveat though. That was uh, that whenever you would execute that exec function, not only your program would like stop executing, your process would be basically replaced with whatever you have called, right? So it would be non-existent. So let's let's say here we want to call a simple ping, right? So we want um, let's say exec. Uh, I want a list of arguments to pass in, and I want it with the path environment variable. Okay, so exec lp I'm going to use. I just want to give it a simple ping here, and as I said, the first argument should be the ping. Then uh, we want to ping, let's say, to google.com, and the last one should be null, the last uh, element inside this list. Now, because I'm on Linux, I don't want this ping to go forever, so I'm going to actually limit the number of counts. So I'm going to actually pass in another set of arguments. So minus, minus C here, that tells it how many times it should ping google.com. Google I'm gonna say here, let's say just three times. That's, that's all we need. Okay, so now we should be able to execute this uh, simple ping using our uh, C program. So if I launch this, well, we should be able to see, as you can see down here, ping google.com three times. As you can see, that was eight milliseconds or 15 milliseconds, pretty fast. It's fine. Okay, so that works. But what if, let's say we wanted to print here, um, I don't know, let's say printf uh, success. So if we know on the console that, okay, well, everything went smoothly, we executed this program, and then we wanted to do maybe some pre uh, post-processing, right? So after the program has finished, we wanted to do something with whatever it did behind the scenes. Can we do that? If we launch this, well, you'll notice I get the ping, so one, two, three, but as you can see, I don't get anything else on the screen. So this success, which I should actually add a text session here at the end, did not print out. Okay, so if I don't execute this, it, it is going to print out, right? Because it's just a simple printf. And sure enough, we see it now. And this is what I mean. The exact functions, what they do is they not only just stop execution and then return back nicely. No, they actually replace your whole process. So all the memory is going to be replaced by its own memory. Uh, the execution line is going to re be replaced by its own line. You are left with nothing, right? So after this exact function, well, you're done. So this was a pretty big caveat. Now we know how to create new processes. We know how to fork a process. Using this information, we can actually call this and also execute something after it, if we create another process for it. So the main idea is to first fork. So I'm going to say here, let's say int PID so from pro process ID equals fork. And well, I'm going to error check, of course. So process ID equals negative one. If that happens, just return one. And uh, we know that something bad happened. After which we should have two processes executing the same line of code. We have a parent and a child. Now it's important which one we choose to execute the exec function on. Because remember with uh, processes, it is important to wait for the child processes, right? But if we, if we call exec on the parent process, well, the parent process gets replaced and it can no longer wait for the child process that may do some post-processing. So that cannot happen. You cannot actually um, call exec on a parent process and expect it to work properly. The child process is going to be actually a zombie process. At the end, it's not going to be its uh, memory freed. So because of that, we should call exec on our child process. And inside the parent process, what we have to do is uh, wait for that process to finish. In this, this way, at least, this guy is going to be waited for and the parent process can execute something after it. How to do that? Very simple. So first we check if 
process ID is zero, that means that we're in the child process, right? In here, what we do is just call exec. So in the child process, whatever we do here after the exec does not matter, gets replaced. But now we have another process, we have the parent process that still executes code. It did not execute this exec, right? Because its speed was something different than zero. So on the else branch, here with the parent process, what we can simply do is say, let's say wait of null. So I want to wait for oh, any child to finish its execution. We only have one child, so it's fine. And let's say print f some post processing goes here, max slash n. And if we try to execute this now, maybe, yeah, maybe we can also copy this success here. Why not? Just to have it uh, be everywhere in the video. Why not? Uh, if we try to run this, you will notice that we ping. So we get the pings, we get three pings here of 64 bytes. It's fine. It says, okay, well, those are the statistics. And this is where the, uh, the ping process ends. So once it ends, the parent process comes along and says, okay, well, we have waited for you. You finished it, your execution. So now we print out success and some post processing goes here. And uh, there should be some post processing that's going on here that you might want to do. Let's say, well, a more useful application of this would be, let's say to, I don't know, create a sort of special file. You could technically, if you wanted to, you could, you could create a FIFO using this. You could say just, make FIFO in here and just uh, pass in the name, right? So we can do here and then, then sum or something. And that would create a FIFO using just Linux uh, commands instead of uh, C functions, right? Now, something really important to take away from this is that the child process didn't have some, uh, some magic properties in which it kept on executing. The child process got replaced by this ping process, okay? So because of that replacement, because of that replacement, we no longer have a child process that we can program our own. We again have our execution line and our memory replaced by exec. So everything after this execution is still going to not work. So if I print f here, let's say this should not print on the terminal, say backslash n. If I launch this, you will notice that I don't get this message on the screen. That's because the exec did actually replace everything in the child process. So here in the child process, it got replaced, but because we didn't execute the same code in the parent process, we actually just waited for the child process. It did wait and we were able to do some post processing in here. That's what I wanted to show in this video. In a later video, we're gonna take a look at how to communicate with these uh, processes, these commands. So if we do ping, how can we get its result? If you do a certain command, how can we get its output? So we know what's, what's going on. Or how can we send an input to a, to a Linux command through uh, a C program? That's what we're gonna take a look in uh, later videos. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.